Hello and welcome to this channel. My name is Victoria and in today's video we are going to talk about a process that should actually rather belong into a physiology class than into pathology. But since it is leading to a lot of pathologies and every change by itself is considered a pathology, it is considered a physiological pathology. I'm sure in the end of the video you are able to follow me. Age changes every one of us. The skin gets wrinkles and when our grandparents look back they might say they don't have the energy of a 20 year old anymore. But why is that so? Today we will take a closer look at the heart and what a course of time does to it. I hope you are excited. Let's get started. The chambers change. The left ventricular wall increases in thickness, which we also call hypertrophy. Also the left atrium changes, but here it is the cavity size rather than the wall that changes. With age, the size of the atrial cavity increases, which doesn't only give space for more blood in the atrium, but also increases the distance between the SA and the AV node. Another change is that the ventricular septum becomes sigmoid shaped rather than straight and the pacemaker cells in the atria get lost progressively with age. Also the valves undergo changes with age. Physiologically, the valves should be able to open and close as necessary to seal off a chamber to keep the blood inside or to open a passage for blood to flow. Over time, the valves become calcified, which prevents them from opening and closing properly. In the aortic valve, calcific depositions can be seen as well as in the annulus of the mitral valve. Calcification is not the only progressive change. Also the leaflets tend to thicken with age, which makes them less movable. Another change that can be observed in echocardiography is the buckling of the individual leaflets of the mitral valve towards the atrium, so superiorly. The total myocardial mass increases due to hypertrophy of each individual cardiomyocyte. So even though the absolute number of cells does not change, the net weight and size will increase. Also the subepicardial fat increases, which is the fat that is found in the myocardial and endocardial lining so the components that make up the total wall thickness. Overall, the receptor sensitivity will decrease. This is characterized by the loss of pacemaker cells in the atria, as well as the reduced ability of the beta adrenergic cells to be stimulated by impulses. This leads to a net increase of catecholamines in the circulating blood. Atherosclerosis, a process that already begins in childhood and progresses for as long as we live, is leading to narrowing of the coronary arteries which supply the myocardium. This leads to a plaque formation which is accompanied by calcific depositions in the arteries. Those processes tend to occlude the arteries, but the decreased elasticity of the arteries leads to an increased luminal area when observed in cross-section. Also the aorta, the biggest vessel in our body, goes through a lot of changes. And as it is so big, those changes are rather significant. It usually tends to shift to the right side of the thorax, which can be observed in a plain chest x-ray. Also the ascending part tends to dilate, which we can also observe in above-named imaging technique. The thoracic part often becomes elongated, which can predispose for formation of aneurysms. If you want to know more about aneurysms, 
you can click on the banner above. Also in histological investigations, we can see deposition of collagen and reduction of elastin, which makes the artery more stiff and increases blood pressure and burden on the vessel walls, which can lead to dissection. As atherosclerosis advances, it can lead to occlusion or thrombus formation. So now you have heard an accumulation of changes, but what does that mean for the heart? For once, the maximum heart rate is reduced. This means that also the exercise tolerance is reduced, as usually the body requires a physiological peak in blood pressure and pulse here. The oxygen saturation decreases when the heart pumps slower than it would be necessary for the body to receive enough oxygen. So even though the demand increases, the heart cannot provide a sufficient supply. The resting pulse, however, changes insignificantly as the heart's duty here is to relax, which it is usually able to do. All the so far mentioned processes by themselves are pathological, as you can imagine, increases and decreases of the original size as well as calcification and deposition, depositions are rather rarely wished for. And those processes are again accelerated by factors as obesity, smoking, inactivity and comorbidities. So if we have a patient who is living healthy but is old, they are already predisposed to have a series of conditions. But if we have a patient who is old and additionally smokes, drinks alcohol, has a BMI of 35 and has diabetes, the risk for heart disease is completely different. Patients with advanced age therefore present with a series of clinical presentations, all due to what we already talked about. In elderly, we observe more frequently sinus node dysfunctions, also AV blocks and bundle branch blocks. Those pathologies can be detected by a routine ECG. Also atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter, as well as arrhythmia, are more of often seen in elderly than in younger patients. If you want to know more about arrhythmia, you can click on the banner above. Other diseases which are provoked by those physiological, pathological changes are heart failure, aneurysms, valvular dysfunction and cardiomyopathies. The videos for those pathologies I include in the banner above, so if you're interested, just check out our pathology playlist and don't forget to subscribe to not miss any of our future uploads. So now we have talked about all the processes the heart can go through, but what can we do against it? Most importantly, we can know about what is happening in our patient's chest. We can monitor the blood pressure and pulse, make regular echocardiograms and echocardiographies, check for the blood flow, the chamber size and the movement of the atrial, ventricular and septal walls. If necessary, we can treat any of the conditions the patient develops. Also here, I can only advise you to check out the individual videos we already made for individual diseases. Often in elderly, the implantation of a pacemaker is considered to support the heart in its function and to help it find back to a normal rhythm and frequency when it needs it. Doctors usually also like to advise patients to change their lifestyle. This is certainly good and quitting smoking or walking more is never a bad idea. But at this stage in life, the heart will not be able to go back to the stage of a 20 year old. These changes occur in some patients sooner than in others, but lifestyle changes is here rather supportive than curative. That's it for this video, I hope you liked it. All that's left for me to say now is that Jesper and I would be very happy about a subscription to support our work. Thank you very much.